Aloha and hello to all of my Google Ads developers out there. And welcome back to Performance Max for Developers. I'm Devin, and this is the last episode in our series. And today, we'll be talking about campaign conversion goals. Now, if you've made it this far into our series, give yourself a pat on the back. And don't forget to hit that like button if you're enjoying the video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all of the latest content. With this being the last video in our series, we'd love to hear what you want to learn about next. What topics should we make videos about in our next series? Let us know by dropping us a comment below. With that out of the way, let's dive in to Episode 8, Campaign Conversion Goals. This diagram from the very first episode in our series depicts a Performance Max or a PMAX campaign at a very high level. In this episode, I'll show you how to set your campaign conversion goals, or this box, using the Google Ads API. To date, we've really only been focusing on this left-hand column here in order to configure all of the details of our PMAX campaign. Let's flip to these three columns right here, presented here in a more simplified way. And now let's layer in the consumer journey. So let's say that someone sees one of your ads that was dynamically generated from your PMAX campaign. They visit your website, browse around a little bit. Maybe they add a few things to their cart, complete a purchase, and then you send them to a purchase confirmation page. Well, from there, what you can do is send a record of that conversion to Google along with a transaction value, if you'd like. And Google will take that information to further optimize its machine learning algorithms in order to better create ads, better target customers, and optimize your budget across different advertising channels. And that brings up an important point, which is that in order to use PMAX, you must have conversion tracking enabled on your Google Ads account with at least one conversion action. What is a conversion action, you ask? Well, let's take a look at this screenshot from the Google Ads UI. And you'll find this in the conversion section. Each one of the rows presented here contains exactly one conversion action, which is an action that a user takes that you define as meaningful to your business, such as an online purchase or a phone call. When you create a conversion action, Google will provide you with a script that you can embed into your pages that will fire off that conversion to Google when a user takes an action like loading a certain web page or clicking a button. And you have the option when you set up this conversion action to use the same value or a different value for each conversion. And if you select use a different value for each conversion, like I've done here, in which case you'd likely use the maximize conversion value campaign bidding strategy, then you can include this value field when you send that conversion to Google and you can update it based on the transaction that the user performs. Alternatively, if you use the use the same value for each conversion option, in which case you'd likely use a maximize conversions campaign bidding strategy, you can just exclude that field from the request altogether. But Google will provide you with the script based on your selection in the conversion action. When you create that conversion action, you also specify a category for it, such as making a purchase or beginning a checkout, as well as an origin or a source, like your website or a mobile app. Altogether, these represent a conversion goal, and each one of the rows on this page, on your conversions page, represents a single conversion goal. And conversion goals are grouped together, as you can see here, by category. When you create a new conversion action, Google will automatically create a new conversion goal for that conversion action's category and source if one doesn't already exist. So if I were to create this begin checkout conversion action, 
and I specify a begin checkout category and an origin of website, if this combination of category and origin doesn't already exist in my Google Ads account, Google will automatically create a new conversion goal like this. In addition, when you create a new campaign, Google will effectively copy all of the customer conversion goals on your account to that campaign as campaign conversion goals. So if I create a new campaign, and these are all the customer conversion goals on my account, when I create that new campaign, it will effectively have all of these conversion goals listed as campaign conversion goals. But what if I don't want to use all of these conversion goals on my campaign? Say for example, I want to use this campaign in order to drive website purchases. As you can see here, I have a conversion goal for users submitting lead forms for music lessons. Well, that's not really relevant. All I really want to focus on is this one conversion goal. So how can I accomplish this with the API? There are three steps in order to do this. Step one is you issue a search request in order to retrieve all of the customer conversion goals on your account. And yes, I said customer conversion goals, not campaign conversion goals. And here's the search query that you'd use in order to do that. The results from that query will be customer conversion goal resources, which will be represented as objects in the client libraries. And each one of these resources is equivalent to one row from our conversions page or one conversion goal. In addition, you can see a few fields on that customer conversion goal resource such as the category, which can be something like purchases, for example, as well as the origin, which is our conversion source, like our website. In addition, there's a field called biddable on this resource, which basically states whether or not this conversion goal is active. The second step is to effectively create a copy of each one of those customer conversion goals as campaign conversion goals and then setting the biddable field to true if you want to include that goal on your campaign and false if you don't. So as you can see here, we want any conversion goals with a category of purchase and an origin of website. So we'll set that one to true and all others to false. Finally, you'll issue a mutate request with one or more update operations and each one of those update operations will contain campaign conversion goal resources with that biddable field set to true or false based on whether you want to include that goal on your campaign. This effectively sets the conversion goals on your campaign. Now that we've gone through this conceptually, let's take a look at the interactive guide just to explore the code that does this in the API. I'm starting here in the overview section of the guide just to show you where this fits into the overall code flow for our PMAX campaign. Now, I've included this as a separate request that's not included in our bulk mutate request. However, you can include it in your bulk mutate request if you choose to do so. So you can see here, I issue my bulk mutate request. Then I use the response to get the resource name of the campaign that way I can pass it into the method that sets my campaign conversion goals. Let's head over to the campaign conversion goals section of the guide. On the left, you can see I can enter in the category and origin for any conversion goals that I want to include on my campaign. And keep in mind, it's not an either or. I need that specific combination for that to be included on my campaign. So let's set this for my website purchases like I wanted to do before. And you can see this updates a list in my code of campaign conversion goals I'm calling desired goals. And I can include multiple different campaign conversion goals if I'd like. Here, let's add another one just to show you what it looks like. And now I'll take it off. As I walk through the code, you'll see this does exactly what I explained before. First, we issue a search request. So let me head into the Get Customer Conversion Goals section of the guide. Here you can see that search query. We need to include the category as well as the origin in the select clause 
so that way we can filter on those values later. We issue our search request and return a list of customer conversion goal objects. Back in the parent method, we'll iterate through each one of those customer conversion goals. And for each one, we'll grab the category as well as the origin, and then we'll create a campaign conversion goal object for each one, setting the resource name using the customer ID, the campaign ID, the category, and the origin. And we'll also create a variable called biddable, which we'll set to false as the default value. We'll use this to set the biddable field on that campaign conversion goal object later on. Next, we'll check our desired goals to see if it contains the category and origin combination of our current customer conversion goal. If it does, we'll set the biddable variable to true. Next, we set the biddable field on the campaign conversion goal object wrap that in a mutate operation, and add it to the list of operations that we'll be using to make our request. Keeping in mind, these are update operations. Finally, we issue our mutate request, effectively setting all of the desired campaign conversion goals on our PMAX campaign. And that about wraps it up for this episode, as well as this series as a whole. I really hope that you've enjoyed this series, you've learned a lot, and this will help you with your integrations. As a reminder, let us know in the comments if there are any videos that you'd like us to make in the future to help explain any sort of topics in the Google Ads API. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.